thank everyone for your offering and sure you would be used to that building in God's kingdom. I want to take just a moment. I had uh, read the scripture uh, back in the week and it kind of touched me and, and made me think. We talked about this morning in <coughs> Bible, or in uh, Bible school, in uh, Sunday school about that in there's a, there's a period in time that says that God will send the strong to delusion to those people that avoid him long enough, his long suffering will end and he will send a delusion and let you believe a lie and be damned, it says. I want to read to you here uh, in the 14th chapter of Matthew. And this is the kind of God that I know. In the 14th chapter, beginning in the 34th verse, it says, And when they were gone over, they came into a land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. They knew he was coming. They knew the fame of him. They knew the power of him. And they sent out to everybody to come there that had any disease or any problem. Verse 36 says, And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Just to be able to touch his raiment healed these people. And today we have the word, Jesus came in flesh, he came and it says, and he was the word and he was the truth. And today we can be healed of the problems that we have here simply by reading the Word, studying about Jesus and the things that He had for us. Now that was had to be a miracle, and I can imagine people saying that Jesus is coming down Highway 460. People would be lined up on both sides that were sick. But yet every Sunday morning we're here talking about Him, and not all congregations are full. Don't let some strong delusion keep you from following what God has in store for you. As Brother Jimmy brings a message. Number 579 will be a song we close with. We always happen, hope that something happens. Uh, if there's a person here that's not a Christian, and uh, God has spoken to you, you wrestle with that thing, you need to get it out of the way. But at least there would be a start here today. Uh, if you're looking for something better, it's out there. If you're content with your life right now, you're probably not going to change. Probably not going to do anything about it. And so we hope today in sharing this message. Sometimes we look at the world as a corporate body. We try to look at everything and sift through it and do this and do that. Keep in mind, if there was not another human being upon the face of this earth, we would have to stand before God as an individual. Now that's what I've always done. It's not my business to take care of everybody else's business. I stay out of people's business. And so I've got to take care of me first. And if there's something in my life that ebbs out and flows out that helps someone else, I think that's the way God meant it to be. Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thence. He said, I brought nothing into this world, and I will take nothing out of this world. One of the biggest obstacles today that society has put upon the people of God, it just absorbs most of our time to even survive and, and to do the simple things of life. And if for whatever reason we choose to move ourselves up on the level of the plane of more, our time for our spiritual life and thinking of those around us, it diminishes as we absorb ourselves into the demands of society. I've come to this conclusion. 
I must first learn to live with myself before I can live with someone else. I've been in the church a long time. I've got scars. Not sores. They're healed. A scar heals. And a scar is good. It's a sign that at least you went through something. We need to be strong in our faith. And we can do that wherever we're at or whomever we're with. And I'm going to deal today for just a few minutes. I made a statement to Bama Sue here a while back and I watched the news and, and there was a horrible crime committed against a baby. And I said, my goodness. I said, Bama Sue, is that person that had a conscience? And I started to study about conscience. There's an old saying that's as wrong as there is daylight and dark. And it said, let your conscience be your guide. That is absolutely not right. Because there are forces that tug and pull between us and our human nature. A lot of times we have trouble being the person that we want to be. We want to be nice. We want to be outgoing. We want to be honest. We want to do these things. But we must be taught of those things. You saw these little ones go downstairs this morning? Beware of sending your children downstairs. There are Christian women that might just tell them to love each other, appreciate each other, serve God, take care of each other, you know, you be real careful. They might learn some lessons down there. Do you see how we think? There's an old saying, it's not biblical. But it simply says, to thine own self be true. Once we have done that, we can be free. I am very free this morning. I'm free from the blood of all men. People can believe what they want. They can choose. But I preach a message that says, this is what God said, if you want to inherit eternal life. And I just lay it out there. I don't get caught up in Satan's schemes of spinning my wheels and change nothing I can't change. I learned that a long time ago. That's another warrior trait. You pick your battles. You fight your battles. <laughs> And eventually you win. Conscience. Conscience can be approving, purged, corrupt, seared, dead, faithful, or guilty. There's three stages of conscience. I am conscious, I think, right now. I know what's going on around me. I react to that thing. And then there's the second one that says subconscious. It's like the old fellow that said, sometimes I sit and thinks, and sometimes I just sit. Is there an individual in this house this morning that says, I have come to my full potential as a Christian? That's what it's going to take to inherit eternal life. It costs God a tremendous, tremendous cost that my soul could be eternal with Him. There's nothing cheap about being a Christian. There is nothing cheap about God. There is nothing cheap about the church. Have we come to our full potential? Are we all the same? Absolutely not. But we were all given some talent. And to find that inner peace in us, we must do that. Whatever it is. I want to go to the scriptures. Uh, I want to share with you my, my bookmarkers. Look at them. Beautiful pink napkins. I got them in a wedding yesterday. 
They were laying on my desk this morning. I couldn't find any markers, so I said, this will do. John 8 and verse 9. This situation come of some critical people. There was a law under the Old Testament that if a woman was caught in the act of adultery that she was stoned. I've always wondered what happened to the man. I mean, let's be fair about it. It was under another period of time, under Jesus' dispensation. He gets both of them. But as the world is, the people around Jesus, they said, let's trap him. I'm going to read. Then they said, tempting him that might have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down and with his fingers wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Sometimes we just need to close our ears and not pay any attention to what somebody's saying or what somebody's doing and get down to the fact of watching ourselves and doing ourselves. That's happiness. You cannot be happy with someone else until you are happy within yourself in your relationship with God. It's an impossibility. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without a sin among you, let him first cast a stone. I don't throw stones because I've got some glass in my house. There's more to life than finding fault with others. There's more to the Christian experience than looking for these little things. And the wisdom of Jesus and some men and women will find it and some will never find it. Because they're too busy looking in the opposite direction. It's called diversion. The devil is the master of diversion. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Do you ever wonder what he wrote? You know, now this is speculation. This is not scripture. You take it as opinion. What would you say if he wrote the old boy's name down that she committed adultery with and he's seen it? Huh? How about that? I don't know. But it was something that really shook things up. And they... And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. There is the word I'm looking for, is conscience. Can we live with ourselves? If we can't, we can't live with anybody else. A spouse cannot live in happiness with their spouse. Will there be differences? Absolutely. But they're to be reconciled through love understanding, forgiveness, the hallmarks of the Christian faith. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. There's an important part in there. The mass was left, and it was her and the Lord for it. And that's exactly what's going to happen to us when we die. The Bible said that we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ there to give an account of the deeds done in the body. Don't we know that? Do we not care enough? And he and she were standing there. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Stop it. Quit it. Whatever we're doing right now to bring unhappiness into our life, we need to stop it, quit it, and do it no more. I don't want to go through 70-something years of my life and be miserable 
and be miserable to everybody that I, my life touches. And that's exactly what some of us will do and think we're right. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You can think about God all you want to. You can feel a closeness to God all you want to. But it, is it delusionary? Or is it real? There is a way to know. Check it out. Check it out by the book. And if that book says you're right, don't you dare leave it. You don't ever leave it. The second piece of scripture I want to go to is in the book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 16. These are the words of a good conscience. And herein I do exercise myself. That means I use it, I use it or lose it. Some people don't use the body and they lose the strength and the next thing you know they can't move. Amen, Charlie? Yeah. Use it or lose it. And Paul said, I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Void means empty. There is no offenses toward my God and my fellow man. I've known people that spent all their life holding a grudge because it happened 50 years ago and they're still fighting. And they got cancer, it eats you up just as simply as you have physical cancer in your body, you can have spiritual cancer in your mind and it eats away your very soul. I ain't going to mess around all my life and be unhappy. I'm going to be a grouch or be a complainer or be a whiner. God didn't put me together to do that. And people like that are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It is not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, that shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, don't you talk to me about loving me when you can't love your brother. He said, you've not seen, and you say you love, and yet you have seen and do not have the ability to love. Whoa. That's some tough stuff. That's just the way we like it. Anything that comes too easy is probably not worth anything to begin with. I want to read it again. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Paul said, I wish that everybody was like me except these chains. Is he happy? You better believe it. Think about it. Be good to yourself. And you can be good to others. And you can accomplish some things with your life. I've saw people leave here that never touched anybody's life. And I say to myself inwardly, my God, what a waste. I don't want my life to be wasted. I don't want your life to be wasted. I want you to have accomplished something in your life so that when your time comes, it'll be good to be with the Master. In 1 Timothy 4 2. 1 Timothy 4 2. Here comes another conscience. We talked about a battle. We talked about one that was wonderful. 
And now we're going to look at the deceived conscience. The deception. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We are flat in the middle of it. Look around you. How many places can you find that says, this is the Word of God, this is our strength, this is our hope, this is our future, this is our ambition. What happens inside when that happens? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot arm. Thank the Lord for modern medicine. Used to, you got a cut in battle or you lost something, they heated up a red hot arm and they cut it across the flesh and they seared it and they stopped the bleeding. That's what seared means. We have closed our conscience by what we have heard, <coughs> by what we have done, by how we live. We have seared it. We have sealed it over. There's no penetration to that conscience. Read your Bible, folks. I can be a Christian anywhere. <clears throat> but I like being at the house of God with my people. Find you a quiet place. Get your Bible out. Look at what that Bible says that you're doing to yourself and correct it with the help of God. In the book of Titus, in the book of Titus, and I got a surprise for you. I didn't write it down. So what you're going to have to do is read this whole book of Titus to see about a conscience. Isn't that wonderful? I'll tell you what, I love to laugh at myself. There's people that don't like to laugh at themselves. And so when people laugh at Adam, they get all bent out of shape. Let's laugh together. Let's share life together. Let's do these things. We're just good old human beings struggling to get through this world to something better to come. The Bible said a man shouldn't think more highly of himself than he ought to. I've had people say, I don't know, Jimmy, the Christian experience, you're not supposed to think very highly. You say, what? You belong to God. You are bought with a price. You mean something to God. You can belittle yourself if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm a warrior of the cross. And I'm happy. Why should I not want that for you? Before I became a Christian, there were people who loved me and prayed for me. And I remember them still. Can we do any less? Hopefully you've come here today and, and if you've got any bad baggage, stick it somewhere. Walk out of here a better person with a better hope, with a better understanding. And it all comes through your conscience. Do not let your conscience be your guide. I never will forget one time when I was a young minister. They make a lot of mistakes. They, got a, they get a bad hoof and mouth disease. Yeah, I've had hoof and mouth disease. I told you, I've had everything. And this lady approached me, this is Miss Frederick, Juanita. And I had made the statement, yeah, I'll listen to your conscience do this. She said, Jimmy, honey, you can't listen to your conscience. 
and listen to what God says. Isn't that beautiful? It's simple this morning. It's not complicated. If you don't want to be a good person today, then walk right on out of here and, and do the old things that you're doing and get mad and get bent out of shape and, and cause problems for your family and everything else. If you want to do that, it's a beautiful. You want to walk out of here something you didn't have when you came in. The ability to function in life. And it'll throw a lot of things at you. At least you got some help. I hope that's what you leave from this good place. It has been good to be with you today and share this message. Don't let your conscience be your guide. Read the book. Then get it inside of you and you can say, as Paul did in Acts, I live in a good conscience before God and men. I'm happy. I'm happy. And all of you are part of my life. Every one of you. There's not a stranger in here, maybe one or two. But you're not a stranger anymore. We mean something to each other. We mean something. We're going to ask you to stand and sing with us. Christ has spoken to you today. Maybe a long time ago you took the vows as a Christian. You've, you've gotten away from those. Please come back. If you've never received Christ into your life, by hearing, by believing, by repentance and confession and baptism for the remission of sin, you need to do all of those good things. While well, you still got time and breath, let's think. Number 579. This is all God.